Well, welcome to Real Talk with Jordan Riley, where the real talk does not come from me. It comes directly from God's word. And before we get started today, please consider subscribing to our channel, giving this a thumbs up, and supporting what we do by going to realtalkwithjordan.com. On today's episode, we're going to talk about Greg Laurie, a pastor of a mega church down in California who you may recognize from the big blockbuster recent hit, Jesus Revolution. But if you look at what he teaches and believes, it may cause you pause and it may cause you to say, what? So are you ready? Let's go. Pastor Greg Laurie went from being a young hippie from a dysfunctional family in the 1970s to embracing and giving his life to Christ. Laurie found himself among many other young hippies that were doing the same thing. He ultimately decided to follow the teachings of Pastor Chuck Smith and preacher Lonnie Frisbee, who later baptized him. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So you see right there that that lady said that Greg Laurie follows the teachings of Chuck Smith. Something ain't right. Now that is a problem right off the bat. And I say, said no verse ever. We as Christians, we follow the teachings of Jesus and the apostles, not of some goofy guy or some you know, pastor from the 80s. Not at all. And plus, Chuck Smith had a lot of issues. He, predi he predicted or claimed that God told him that the rapture was gonna happen in 1981. Obviously that did not happen. That makes him a false prophet. Also, he teaches a false gospel that you have something to do with your salvation. And also, Chuck Smith was good friends and partnered with Billy Graham, who's a major false teacher. So let's dive a little deeper and I'm gonna show you some more things about Greg Laurie that's gonna give you a lot to think about. Number one, Greg says that God's not angry with you. Oh, really? Well, God is angry at me and he wants to ruin my life. Some people think this. God's just out to ruin everything that I planned for myself. You know, that is so wrong. <laughs> God's mad at me. God is not mad at you. Now, you have to see that this is absolutely a lie. I mean, it makes you feel good. Oh, God's not angry with me. I can do whatever I want. I'm fine. No. We need to see what the Bible says, not what a goofy megachurch pastor says. Psalm 5.5 5 says this. It says, the boastful shall not stand before your eyes. You hate all who do iniquity. That's a little ouch right there if you think about it. But it goes a little deeper. Romans 1 verse 18 says this, quote, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Did you see what I just read there? For the wrath of God is revealed. Wrath doesn't just come because God's happy with you. There's got to be some anger about something. Think about that. And we're gonna go a little deeper. Second Thessalonians chapter one, verses eight and nine says this, quote, when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, inflicting vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus, they will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction. Now, come on, guys, think about that a second. Those three verses literally prove that God is angry with people. He hates sin. He will punish sin and punish sinners. This doesn't sound like God's happy with you. Oh boy, I'm just lovely and wonderful. How about new? Not at all. And Greg is leading people astray with this false teaching. Number two, Greg says that God loves you. Wow. That's awesome, because guess what? I love me too. If there's one thing that's clear in scripture, it is this, God loves you. <laughs> you see it from Genesis to Revelation. He says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. I just have to say right there, said no verse ever. I mean, again, Greg's gonna say that God loves you and God loves everybody and we're all just wonderful. No. Now, who does God love? Now, the Bible is very clear that God shows kindness, mercy, goodwill towards everyone. The Bible says that the rain falls on the just and the unjust. 
Okay, so God is kind and gracious towards people. But as far as love, his love is totally pointed to those that are his, those he has chosen to save, those he has called from the foundation of the world, Ephesians 1 verse 4. Now, many will people say, but wait, we're all God's children. <coughs> Absolutely not. Okay, we're all God's creation, but we are not all God's children, according to John 1 verse 12. Also, Matthew 1 21 is a very fascinating verse. It says that Jesus came to save his people from their sin. That's a very select group. It's not, he didn't come to save everybody from all their sin, because that would be false because there are people in hell today. See, here's the problem. Greg Laurie wants to make it about everybody. Let's just all be, be one big happy family. God loves us all. Everything's wonderful. Kumbaya, my Lord. Kumbaya. That is damning. It is a false belief that is hurting people because it's giving them false assurance and false hope. Number three, Greg says that God wants to bless you. Well, that's amazing. I want God to bless me too. God loves you. God wants to bless you. God wants to give you a life that is worth living. What? Said no verse ever. Now, does God want to bless his children? Absolutely, and we talked about that in the last point. There's a select group of people that are his children, those he has called, those he has saved. But if you are not his child, you fall under Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. Death, hell, punishment, wrath. If you are not a child of God, if you have not been saved by Jesus through repentance and faith, through God choosing to save you, you are not under that love and that blessing and that umbrella of safety, not at all. And I don't want, I would not want to be you if you're watching me today and you're in that predicament. Don't fool yourself thinking why I prayed a prayer when I was seven. I went to vacation Bible school in third grade. That does not save you. You can't find a Bible verse that says that that's what saves you. Now, please understand that Greg is teaching a very man-centered gospel. This is stuff that is nowhere found in the Bible. I'm sorry. You don't look through and just say that God just wants to bless you. He's not Oprah. You get a car. You get a car. You get dollars. You get money. Let it rain, you know. No, not at all. Okay? See, the problem with Greg's teaching is it causes you really not to follow Christ because you're fine just the way you are. Number four, Greg leads people in the unbiblical and damning sinner's prayer. You need to watch this. And we are so thankful that you have all made the most important decision of your entire life. This is the night your life changes for time and eternity. As I pray this prayer, I would like you to pray it out loud after me. God, I'm sorry for my sin, but I thank you for sending Jesus Christ, the Son of God, to die on that cross for my sin. I turn from that sin. I choose to follow Jesus from this night forward as Savior and Lord, as my God and my friend. Thank you for hearing this prayer. Thank you for answering this prayer. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you guys. And welcome to the family of God. Now I believe this is one of the most dangerous things that Greg does in all of these points. You know, according to him, you just repeat this little mantra and bam, welcome to the family of God. You're in. What's wrong with you people? It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter if you've heard the gospel. If you just repeat this little prayer, bingo, bango, boingo, and you're in. Blasphemy. And to that I say, said no verse ever. You see a pattern here? I've already said that several times in this episode. Jesus and the apostles never once did this. Do you want to ask me into your heart? Do you want to make me Lord and Savior? Do you want to repeat this prayer after me? I see that hand. That never happened in the Bible, ever. No apostle ever led someone, repeated a prayer with them. Never. John 1 verse 13 is very clear that it's not by our will, but by God's will that we are saved. Again, same thing with John 3 verses 3 through 8. Salvation is a result of what God did, what Jesus did on the cross, not what we do and not what we decide. Because you see, making a decision does not save you. 
God decides to save us, not the other way around, according to Ephesians 1, verse 4. Number five, Greg says that God doesn't send anyone to hell. <laughs> wow, you definitely need to see this. For all practical purposes, God does not send anyone to hell. We, in effect, send ourselves there. Final day, no one is going to be accidentally in hell, and no one is going to be accidentally in heaven. People will be in heaven because of a deliberate choice, and people will be in hell for the same reason. So if God doesn't send anyone to hell, then how do they get there? I mean, you know, according to him, you, you choose to go to heaven, or you choose to go to hell. <laughs> what? Said no verse Ever. This is pure unbiblical nonsense. God is the one who chooses from the foundation of the world. Ephesians 1 4. You know, salvation again is not based on what we do or the decisions we make or the amount of Bible verses we know or the church we go to or the family we were raised in. Not at all. It's based on the finished work of Jesus. That's what it's all about. But I want you to see this. Acts 13 verse 48 says this quote, When the Gentiles heard this, they began rejoicing and glorifying the word of the Lord. And as many as had been appointed to eternal life believed. Did you see that right there? As many as had been appointed to eternal life believed. That means God chose, God appointed, God determined, predetermined who would be saved. And that's what happened. Because nothing can stop the will of God. Not us, not anybody. And also, if you look at Re Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 through 15, Matthew 25, verse 41, it clearly shows that God is the one who sends people to hell. I mean, Jesus casts people into outer darkness all the time. He refers to you know, people being cut off and thrown into the fire. That's not a little burn pit. That's talking about eternal hell. Sadly, Greg Laurie is a false celebrity pastor who twists God's word. Why? because his mentor was a major false teacher, and that is Billy Graham. Greg Laurie talks about it all the time. He wrote a book, oh, the, the, the Billy Graham that I knew, and you know, they were, he, literally that was his mentor. You know, Billy Graham mentored uh, Greg Laurie a lot. And that's where Greg Laurie gets a lot of his false teaching. And you can see right here, the video that I did just a few months ago about Billy Graham from his own words and how he is a major false teacher who led millions to hell. See, Greg's message is more about you than about Christ. And that message is a false message that robs God of his glory and leads many people straight to hell.